Hello, Mr. Chris Stiles. Hello, Mark. Hey, we're here with, for the USA Drone Port. want to give a short update on some things that we're working on right now. We're always busy and we're bad about giving updates. We don't slow down really enough to take the time to do it, but uh, we were creating videos for classes and other things that we've been working on today and thought it would be a really good time to do that. So, um, one of the big things that we've been working on, some of you all have seen it probably in the press over the past couple, three months, has been the Jericho Project. We actually started working on the Jericho Project uh, about mid-March. The idea uh, started being circulated. Uh, we had several people on the phone. Uh, it was a trying time because COVID had really uh, just astonished everybody to the extent of what our life's changes were going to be. And the Jericho Project kind of fit into um, how we could use drones for package delivery. Not drones like large commercial multi-million dollar organizational drones, but drones that you get from Walmart, from Best Buy, etc. So as conversation increased, uh, we realized that uh, we probably weren't going to get funding, a large federal funding, which we had talked about the applied for. So we realized this was going to be more of a grassroots thing. And uh, we had some partners that uh, liked what we were doing. One of our friends uh, suggested uh, these partnerships. You want to tell them a little about that, Chris? Yeah, we've got a couple that have uh, come on board with us uh, in varying capacities. Uh, our biggest one right now, we're working with the University of Kentucky, and that's been a big uh, push for what we've been doing behind the scenes. Uh, as you guys have probably seen on some of our social media, we've put links from some of the news uh, that we've received from that program. It's an ongoing uh, series of test flights. We've been doing other test flights on the side that go parallel with this uh, push. And uh, the uh, Project Jericho, as we called it, uh, has been the overall program name that we're kind of doing for all of this package delivery stuff for medical purposes. You know, obviously, you know, package delivery as a concept, it's been out for a while. It's been well tested, especially in the consumer. Uh, arena and in urban environments, but not so much in rural and Appalachia especially. So rural mountainous terrains, there's not been a lot of testing in any kind of delivery uh, methodologies, and but more specifically in the medical aspect. So when uh, when uh, COVID came around, you know we found we saw this you know real big need in this niche uh, to fulfill uh, doing PPE or test kits or vaccinations, medicines. And so that's been, that's how we built this program up. We partnered with the University of Kentucky. They uh, were early on very interested in this uh, as a uh, test case for them to do some testing in some of their rural uh, health network. And so we've got a couple of healthcare providers that are with them that have a series of patients that we've lined up to do these deliveries under varying conditions and circumstances. And so we started off, you know, walk, or crawl, walk, run methodology, and we're kind of at the, the walking right now. We've crawled, we've, we've, that we've done some of the base establishing tests and flight stuff, and now we're walking it out. We're increasing our capabilities, testing out certain things. We've partnered with the FAA, so we're giving FAA a lot of the data and the information that we're generating, so they've got visibility on it, and we're gonna be pushing certain uh, things that beyond the envelope of what you normally be able to fly under part 107 or, or you have to require a COA. And because a lot of these cases, you need to fly beyond line of sight. You need to be able to fly at night. You know, there's there's different things that you're going to have to do that go outside the current boundaries of part 107 operations to be able to really have medical deliveries that you would be able to do in a normal use case. Yeah, and University of Kentucky have made wonderful partners too. They've worked with us mm -hmm. very well. The healthcare providers have been trained on how to be active visual observers, uh, have had about 10 hours training, and now they're in, we'll be in our third and fourth flights here uh, very soon. And they're literally helping us bring those drones in and the deliveries to do it. So as Chris said, we've started out very rudimentary with this uh, because of multiple reasons, but one of them in particular is uh, we've tried to keep this on an affordable scale, so this is something that can be uh, expanded down the road too. Um, so 
we've not put at this point exceptionally expensive uh, delivery devices on the drones. We kept it relatively rudimentary, simple, very cost efficient, things that people in any community can do to their drones and do it safely and afford to do it. Ten dollars will, will buy what you need to do uh, to set the drone up with the package deliveries we've been doing so far. Um, it's not high tech. But uh, what we are doing is something that is high tech and has not been done. I'll give you an example. In March, when we started looking at this, um, I came back from a meeting uh, out of state, and uh, COVID really had changed during that time I was gone. It was from a very bustling uh, element to nobody anywhere, almost apocalyptic, um, post apocalyptic, and I, it's really kind of freaky. And when I got back uh, here in Hazard, we actually had power outages that were, some people were out for two weeks. I mean, this is in March too. It's not a warm time of the year. There's people that had issues. And you had snow, you had ice, you had floods that happened during that time. And all this stuff on top of COVID. So this got us thinking, you know, with these floods, how are we going to get insulin to people that have to have it. How are we going to get batteries uh, for uh, oxygen tanks to these people uh, across these swollen rivers? And when you can't even drive there, there's not even uh, roads cleared off to get there at this point. So that you know that raised a lot of frustration, particularly with us and a lot of the people we work with. It was like we have the ability to do this now. We have these aircraft that can literally pick these up and take them there. We don't have the authorization to do this. And we live in the mountains and we can't fly from here over that mountain and deliver it to that person, which may be less than a mile away or a mile and a half. And the drone's very capable of doing it, but we're not allowed to legally. So we're working uh, directly with the FAA to say, here are some of our issues. We're in a very rural area, and we feel like we can do this safely. You know, even if a drone has a problem, it's not going to harm anybody, and we can learn from this and figure out how to expand this out. They've been very generous with their time, with their uh, work with us to provide uh, help uh, on this. And then I want to go to the University of Kentucky. Uh, Mr. Robert Donnan, a friend of ours, has worked with the drone port for... Uh, from nearly the beginning. Um, he is also on uh, one of the advisory boards for the University of Kentucky Rural Health um, Center of Excellence here in Hazard. And he sees what we're doing, he listens, and he's got the ability to formulate, hey, these people are doing this and you all are doing this. Y'all need to talk to each other. And he set up the initial uh, appointment with the uh, Fran Feltner and uh, Beth Woods and um, several of the other folks with the University of Kentucky, and we've worked with uh, several of them now. Um, so this has been an opportunity for us to say, hey, we understand drones and what we can do, but we don't understand the medical world so much. Uh, because wouldn't it be awesome if eventually we had secure communications with these drones where we could uh, keep HIPAA material uh, secure and we could actually deliver medication like vaccinations, deliver medica uh, medication like um, insulin and other things that need to be uh, delivered. So with them understanding what has to happen from that end, working with us on the potential of how this can work on our side, um, it's been really good. Um, it has been a crawl, walk, run, and hopefully we'll be a crawl, crawl, walk, run, fly, and be able to extend this beyond visual line of sight, uh, be able to do this in a manner that's going to be really helpful in Eastern Kentucky, in Appalachia, and potentially much broader than that. So it makes us feel really good to have the drone port being a part of it. With that, 
Um, we'll transition into another part that's been great. Our friends with the uh, AML Abandoned Mine Lands uh, have been partnering with us for about two years. And this is not a fast moving process, but uh, to do this right, uh, it, it really can't be. So we're at a point now with AML where we've received $1.5 million to build, uh, to build a part of our campus, to build a building which we had hoped initially would be two buildings and uh, that it would be a little bit bigger than what it is now. Uh, COVID has, as anybody who's done any repairs or anything during COVID knows that the price of a board is much more expensive than it was uh, in December last year. Two, three, four times more for parts. So guess what that does to the cost of our build? Uh, we've had to look at it serious and say this is the most important part of this. This is what's going to help us in this area because we are essentially spending a quarter to a half as much as we initially had. Um, we're still excited about what we're going to be able to do with the project. Um, another thing that's happened, CRAD, uh, Perry County Fiscal Court and Knott County Fiscal Court have been really helpful in getting uh, the utilities to the drone port and they're currently doing that. That was a com combined effort with AML and ARC uh, to get uh, sewer and water to the drone port. Um, that was 1.25 million uh, total combined grants. So you have 2.75 in that vicinity money being spent right now to bring the potential of new industry of testing, of research, of education, of giving something to our kids to be able to use here to better their likelihood of having high paying jobs in this area. Uh, so our friends with AML, ARC, CRAD, Perry County Fiscal Court, the board members of uh, the USA Drone Port, and our friends at University of Kentucky and many other places, Embry-Riddle University, who's paired with uh, HCTC, for the classes, and we never want to forget the Hazard Community Technical College who is providing uh, high education here, who is with the FAA CTI program, which means that we were one of the very first ones to be federally recognized as a program, um, and we're training people through that. So I've rambled on. Chris, i let you jump in on any of that part or anything else that you want to. Yeah, so as, as Bart kind of mentioned in the beginning, you know, we've been kind of quiet. We get, you know, busy with doing this stuff. We've done, we've had a lot of planning in the, in the background behind the scenes that this has been visible, planning for the construction of the building. We've got the designs pretty much nailed down now, and we're looking at submitting those and probably breaking ground sometime over the summer. So, you know, obviously we'll be giving more updates more frequently once that happens. We've got stuff to show off. You know, for the construction at the site, uh, but we believe it's going to be a really great building for you know what we can build with the the 1.5 million dollars, and we want to make it you know as, as best as we can to work for the the community and bring those jobs and bring other companies here working and doing testing and training at the facility, and uh, we've also been working behind the scenes on uh, other training uh, programs. You know, a big proportion of what the Drumport does is training for first responders. We weren't able to do that last year because of COVID. So look to uh, have dates announced later this summer, maybe early fall for doing some training iterations now that vaccines are going to be out. And uh, we've got some things that we've been planning that look like they're going to be very unique and uh, either never been done before or hasn't been done very often with some of these training uh, scenarios that we want to run for certain first responders in law enforcement or search and rescue or firefighters. And those will also incorporate the, the community here. And uh, we're excited. We can't quite announce those things just yet, but we're, we're getting very excited about some of those prospects. Yeah, another thing too, we had, with, I mentioned the uh, work with HCTC and the classes and all that. Uh, it's at a point too where um, these classes, some of our students are beginning to get through a year of the classes and getting to a point where they understand what's happening. and. I hope to see uh, them with their innovative ideas, with their entrepreneurial spirits, uh, begin building things in this in this locale um, to see this uh, to see this grow. We've also been uh, marketing this 
uh, nationwide and worldwide over the past uh, three years and uh, hope uh, with what we're building on that campus that it'll be attractive to people to bring businesses in or to at least bring the testing and research, some of the education and things like that to this location. Another thing we'd like to see happen, um, we've talked quite a lot about STEM education and it's going to be a really good thing for us and for uh, the kids in grade school, middle school and high school particularly uh, in the next, over the next year, year and a half as our uh, equipment and buildings come online. Um, we'll be able to do STEM education and provide stuff for our kids in this region in Appalachia that they're not getting other places, that they're going to get hands-on ability uh, to utilize the equipment to test, to learn, uh, to be in environments that are offered that just aren't available in a lot of other places. And we're going to invite our friends from all over the nation to come here and utilize that. But we want our folks here to know that it's available and that, you know, this is a, uh, we are a nonprofit. We are a place that's trying, that are here on our uh, goodwill and our endeavors to bring business education and stuff to this area. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good wrap up uh, for what we've got right now. Obviously, we've got a lot of things that we've been working on, uh, things that kind of build up to get ready for the facilities to be open. So uh, a lot of the administrative side has just been on in the background working and getting these things lined up like uh, 501c3 status. We're getting ready to, to put that and get that applied. And that'd be great for the drone port uh, so that we can operate under that status as well. Yeah. So we'll try to keep you, uh, try to keep you up to date as it goes. Um, we're, like I said, it's one of the things that we're not really good about. We're, we're, we, we rarely slow down to talk about this, but we thank you for your support. We thanks, we thank you for the continued uh, efforts with the community and with our friends in the uh, UAS community too that uh, that work with us on a daily basis and have uh, been that worked to such kind regard. So with that, we will uh, close out, but we'll bring another update to you soon. Thanks.